Hi all, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today's project is this really pretty mixed media poinsettia. Let's get started. I have my canvas all set up. I'm using a 12 by 12 canvas that I've painted black. I use the uh, DecoArt chalk paint and I put a couple of coats on it to give it a really nice surface. And I've used a 12 segment stencil to mark my grid lines. So to get me started I go corner to corner so I can find the center. And then I place my stencil down and orient it to the center point and then make my marks. I don't try to orient the stencil to the canvas but rather to that center mark and that'll give you better results each time. So I go ahead and get 12 segments down and that gives me a really nice foundation to start this project. I like to use a lot of mixed media in my work and so I'm trying out some different things. These are some uh, cardboard coasters for the holidays. They have some pretty red cardinals and some poinsettias and happy holidays and I thought that might be nice so I, I kind of considered that. I had some uh, poinsettia stickers that were pretty. Not as dimensional but I thought the color and design would be pretty. Here's some poinsettias in glitter red and gold. And here's some little snowflakes. These were little snow, snow glitter snowflakes and I thought these might be pretty because I'm just trying to decide what I want and my center will kind of guide what the rest of the pattern looks like. These snowflakes flakes are nice. They have different shapes and they've got that really pretty glitter on them. Can't see the glitter in the in the video very well but look at those shapes are nice and I thought well that might be nice. Put one in the center, put some on the outside. Tried that. I had some little pine cones that I considered using. I thought those might be pretty. And then I have these paper uh, poinsettias that are uh, really nice. They're like a kind of made out of like a crepe paper and they have little gold beads in the center. And I thought those would be really pretty. And I love the color. I think the color's great. It's got a dark green leaf um, and, and the dark green petals. So I think that's ultimately what I'm going to use. So just want to get my canvas set up. And then I'm going to put the flowers in the center and get them arranged so I can see what it's going to look like and that'll also tell me where to start the rest of my marks on the canvas so I don't want to paint the center if I don't have to right it's just going to get covered up and uh, so I want to see how far out uh, my arrangement of the center flowers is going to go so that looks pretty good one tip is to use your cell phone and take a picture and this shows me that I'm going out to about the third uh, circle the third uh, radial radius there and uh, so I'm just making a note of that and that's what my center is going to look like. Now I'm ready to move on with the rest of the markings keeping in mind that I'm using that third uh, radial up. Let's get those out of the way. Now that I know what my center is going to look like I'm ready to start making the rest of the grid lines and I am going for a poinsettia look so I am going to look at the mandala shape stencils that I have and these are available in my Etsy shop for those of you that have them this is a nice project uh, to use them and I'm just going to look at the different shapes and see which one I think is going to give me the shape of uh, petal that I'm looking for and uh, they come in these different sizes this is the smallest size it's too small for my project so I'll end up using the one and a half and the two inch size and see this uh, this particular petal shape it's perfect it's got a really uh, sharp tip and it it uh, really does will end up looking more like a, a representation of a poinsettia so I'm going to be using that in the one and a half inch and the two inch sizes I decided that I need to pull these marks out these um, these uh, the 12 the segments so that I can I'm going to pull them out and extend them a little bit and then I'll be able to use my stencil more effectively so I'm starting with the first row and you can see that I see where I'm going to start uh, the bottom of that petal line it up to those uh, radiating grids and I can easily make my marks I'm just going to put a few down first and show you how the three rows come together and then I'll, I'll go speed through the finishing of the, of the uh, canvas. Now I'm using the larger one 
and you can see that I don't have to use this full stencil. I can use any part of the stencil that works for my design. So I pulled that stencil down pretty far. Now you can't see it on camera, but these stencils are translucent so you can see through them and I can see down below to the canvas and the markings that are there so I, it helps me line them up. And I'll just use the bit of, the, of that stencil that I need to in between each of the previous petals. I'll just put another few, couple down so you can see what that looks like. Marking the canvas is sometimes the most laborious part. But I need the grid marks, honestly. It helps me do a better painting. I don't always use them, but when I'm doing a, a piece like this where I have a lot of repetitive pattern, then it's really helpful. Now I'm going out to the third row and I want to get close to the edge of my canvas. Um, and so I'm just kind of eyeballing it here and I put a mark down. I ultimately decided that that was actually too short a petal and I wanted to go a little closer to the edge of the canvas. So I just move it up and redraw. Keeping in mind that I've noted, you know, which of the circles I'm on so I can do a consistent size each time. Line it up to the center of the, each of those spokes for the 12 segments. Keep in mind when you're using stencils that your stencil is going to be a little bit smaller than you first think because you've got the pencil that's going in, right? So it's taking a little bit of the space. So you want to maybe account for that. Now I'm going to speed through the rest of this and I'm going to continue to draw and finish up that first row. Then I'll move out to the second row. It's really, really easy with these stencils, but you could use lots of things. As I mentioned, you could use, you know, make yourself a paper stencil or just freehand it. Now I'm going out to the third row. And just pulling those all the way around. Trying to make them as consistent as I can. And finish up that last one. So here's my canvas. It's all set up, ready to go. Now this is just a reminder of what my center is going to look like so I can remind myself what I'm going for. Now I know that um, I am at the third ring out. I'm going to use three colors of paint here. I'm going to be using a dark hauser green, a festive green, and bright green. And I'm going to start on the outside first, and I'm going to go all the way around. I'm using my G6 four millimeter crochet hook, dipping it each time to create a consistent size of dots all the way around that ring. And then I'm using a nail, the large nail dotter, going in with the festive green, that was the dark hauser green I used on the outside, and then going in again with the bright green. You could use all the same color green if you wanted, you don't have to use different color greens, but because I'm going to be doing using those same colors out on the outer uh, green leaves, I want to keep some consistency uh, with the paint. I want to carry those colors out into the larger piece. Now I'm going to outline my uh, petal shapes, and I'm going to be using these uh, deco art squeeze bottles. These are really cool. They're actually writers um, and they've got this fine tip that fit on two ounce bottles and also on the bottle that comes with it. You can see the tip I'm just going to use to do the outlining there. And um, I think these are really fun to give you some different dimension and texture to your to your paintings. So I've put that on my gold paint and I'm just getting it started here. And what I'm going to do is outline each one of these petals on each of the three rows. And I'm going to go slightly outside of the uh, chalk mark, right on the outside of the chalk mark. And as I draw that line up, at, when I reach the tip, I sort of pull up slightly to get a sharp point. 
and I'll do each side. And keep moving around. If I need to, I'll go in with a nail dotter and sort of smooth out the lines a little bit. And then just finish up the rest of them. That's the first row. Now I'll move into the second row. Kind of tidy up where I need to. And finish up my third row. These are really easy to use. And again, they're a nice outlining. You could use a pen a gold leaf type pen or something like that if you're more comfortable with that but these really work pretty well and so I'm pretty I'm happy with the way these worked out just finish up my last little bit of tidying up there you can sometimes smooth a line if you got a little a little wobbly and there's the finished piece with all the outlines now I'm going to actually start my center and I'll be using two colors. I'll be using uh, red. I'm using Romance Red and uh, Wild Berry for the lighter shade. I'm using my G6 four millimeter crochet hook to put down those top three dots. And then my largest nail dotter. And I'll put down some dots uh, the same size. And then on that third one, I'll uh, third dot down, I'll walk the dots down to the base of the petal. I'll go in with my uh, largest uh, nail dotter. Actually, this is a, the smaller end of that nail dotter. And I'm using the Wild Berry. And I'm putting down some consistent size dots. I think I've got about seven of them, counting the center. And then I will walk the dots down to the base of the petal. I'll do the same thing on the other side. small tool and I'll put a couple dots to fill in that space and then filling in the top with a couple dots I may do two I may do three depending on how much space I have there there is some variance in the size of the petals of course and now I'm going in with a nail dotter this is one of my sort of smaller nail dotters and again consistent size dots until I'm close enough to the base that I can walk the dots down I think I've got about five of the same size and then I'll walk them down. I'm going in with the G6 four millimeter and the Wild Berry and I'm putting a drop in the center of the petal, center base. Then I'll walk, using a small nail dot or walk the dots around. As you know, I hit that center dot again so I can get even dots on either side of the center. Going in with the red, go around, finish up the other side. And then using the same size or a size that works for you, I'm starting at the base, putting a couple of same size, a few same size, and then I'm going to walk the dots up to the meet that red. And then I will, using a smaller tool, walk three dots up and place a center. That finishes that petal, and then I will just do that all the way around for all of the 12 petals on that row. Moving on to the second row, I'm using the L11 8mm to place a dot right there at the, at the V from the previous row, 
and I'll walk three dots down using a nail dotter. Again, adjust the tools to the size of spacing that you have. And then at the top, I'm using the K10.5, 6.5 millimeter to put three dots. And then I'll go in with my G6, four millimeter, and put a couple of smaller dots on either side. And then I'll use my largest nail dotter to walk the dots down from there to the edge. Now, uh, you'll notice that I start at the base and then I go up to the top. So I'm kind of moving to the center of the petal. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want, number one, to be sure these elements are focal, focal points of this particular petal. And then I can adjust my tools if I get to the center and I don't have enough space, I can adjust the size of the tools to finish out the design. Now I'm going in with Barry and the G6, four millimeter, and putting three dots in there. Going in with my nail dotter and walking the dots down to the edge of the petal. Again with the G6, four millimeter, I'll go in with red. And I'm just alternating these colors a little bit to give a little bit of shading, effective a shading. A little, little change in the color variation. And then a nail dotter to walk those dots down. I didn't like the way that one looked, so I got to go back in and pick it up. The paint kind of um, spread and was touching. So I'll go in and just clean that up and, and go in maybe with a smaller tool and put those three dots. And sometimes you can get two, sometimes you get three. Don't worry about it. Uh, you're just filling in the space. Now I'm going to go in with a smaller, one of my smaller nail dotters and walk the dots around that center. Go in with the red and walk the dots around. Cleaning off my tool really regularly as I go around so I don't get a buildup of paint. And then I'm going in with the berry um, in the center here, and this is where I'm, these two elements from the top and the bottom of the petal are meeting, so I could adjust the size of the tool. In this case, I'm using the G6 four millimeter to put three dots, and then a nail dotter to just put a couple more dots. You'll notice here, I don't have enough space to use the nail, large nail dotter again, so I go in with a smaller size to fill that space in. And I do that all the way around, and here's how the two rows of petals look. I think that is so pretty. Now I'm going to start the leaf row, the green row, and I'm going to be using, I'm going to make a mix of paint. I'm using cadmium yellow and um, festive green, and I'm just going to make a mix so I get more of a yellow green. Now if you have a yellow green paint in your stash, then use that. Um, I have a color called Citron that I like, but I thought it might be a little bit too bright, so I decided to mix my own, but you, if you've got a green, you know, just mix it. And I'm just trying to get a little bit of contrast with light and dark. So I use my K 10.5, 6.5 millimeter to put that center dot with that uh, yellow green and um, a smaller nail dotter, medium, sort of medium sized nail dotter to walk the dots around. also with the yellow green. And then I'm going in with the uh, Hauser, dark, Hauser dark green and using a medium sized tool, making some consistent sized dots around the top and then walking them around. I'll start at the base with the yellow green and pull some of the dotting up from the bottom, from the base of the petal up. And that's just to give it a little bit more interest. Now I'm using the festive green and my large nail dotter. I'll put down uh, some same size dots and then a couple uh, a center and one on other side and then walk the dots uh, to the edge. Go in with the Hauser dark green and my G6 four millimeter. And you can see that I'm putting um, five dots there and then using a nail dotter to get the smaller size dots. Now I'm going in with the yellow green that I uh, built, that I mixed. I'm 
starting in the center and walking about five or so dots down and then I want to come to the edge and walk up to meet the previous dots and that's just to give a little variation of the sizing it just adds a little bit of interest to change it up with uh, the G6 four millimeter and my festive green place my center dot and then another with my larger nail dotter uh, a couple of same size dots and then walk the dots down smaller nail dotter walk the dots up three a little spike there and then I'll go in with that yellow green and see I'm going to change this up I'm going to go from right beside that uh, uh, festive green and then I'm going to walk dots up and walk dots uh, down so that I'm getting sort of the, um, the the point I'm highlighting the point of the leaf and then I will do that same pattern in each of the leaves each of the petals all the way around isn't that pretty and that's how it looks so you can stop this at any time and go back you know since I've just done the one pattern for each of the rows you can go back in and, and look at that watch that as many times as you want and then I top dotted with gold not a whole lot of gold you can see where I've sort of just highlighted some of the elements here to um, to match up to the uh, to the outlining that I did and now I'm ready this is sat for several days and um, I'm going to varnish it. I'm using a Liquitex satin varnish. I do not like the high gloss personally for most things, um, but it's a personal preference whether you like matte or satin or high gloss. And then I have these car um, waxing sponges that I like. They have a really fine grain on them and they've got that little grippy handle and I just put it in a plastic bag in between uses. This um, varnish you don't add any water to it, it's fairly liquid. I just uh, sort of rotate it a little bit to mix it. And then I'll apply some to my sponge. And in a circular motion, I'm just going to add this to my canvas. And this is going to give it a really nice finish and really pop those colors. Isn't that pretty? So it's not, a, it's got a shine, but it's not a high gloss shine. It's just a sort of, it's a satin look. So I really like that a lot. And I will. Uh, I let it dry for you know a few days in between and then I varnished it again. Now I'm ready to go in and finish up my center. Here's that one uh, coaster again which I like and I'm going to use in a project but it's just not right for this one. So now I've got those paper leaves or those paper uh, poinsettias and I will put those on. They came with their scrapbooking from the scrapbooking section so they came with these little foam um, stickies but they're not really I don't think they'll hold on well to the canvas so I'm going to take those off and I'm going to use my hot glue gun to um, to apply those so I'm going to arrange them first and I'll reference the picture that I took I'm going to add a um, I've got two sizes of uh, poinsettias here from those the paper the paper poinsettias and I'm going to just arrange them and then I will glue them down Okay, so without disturbing it much, I'm just going to pick them up one at a time, add the hot glue to the back, and then um, that way I'll have a good, you know, I'll, they'll be well placed. I've got my glue gun, just a regular glue gun, put some glue on the back. And then holding those other pieces down, I'll just add that in. Those gold beads are really pretty in the in the center of these, and that's what ultimately um, what I drew on to put the gold outline and the gold top dots. They're very close in color and all the colors are listed in the description below so you'll be able to use the same colors or use colors that you love you know and again if you don't like the dimensional or the mixed media look just fill in that center how you you know in a, with a pattern that you would like and I think that that would be so pretty I think the, the just the petals the pink and the red the gold the greens is just beautiful 
Uh, so there's lots you could do with that center if you didn't want to use a mixed media type um, center like I like I'm doing. I like the dimension of the mixed media, so I, uh, I I'm going to keep trying out some projects with uh, with that technique. And there you go. That's the finished piece. I think it's beautiful. I think it's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. So next we're going to move on to framing and I just want to give you some ideas on how to frame this. Now we have uh, our piece finished and um, love the way it turned out. I don't always use a frame on everything but this is on a canvas panel and I do find that with the canvas panels it's nice to have a little bit of a frame around them. So we'll talk a little bit about some types of frames. Here's a 12 by 12. This is just a really basic frame. It's got a relatively flat profile um, and uh, a basic just kind of uh, sort of standard uh, framing box. And it's pretty and I think it would work great. It'll give a little bit of, uh, of uh, heft to the piece. Here's one that's from the scrapbooking section. It's a memory box and it has a little bit more depth to the box. A couple of things you'll notice is this one has a little bit more of a beveled edge um, sort of the, some of that molding type edge. This one is a really flat edge. So you can kind of consider which uh, types are uh, more in keeping with the piece that you're using. Um, the other thing um, I look for is how deep is the box on the frame and with some of the mixed media pieces you might need a little bit more depth. Here's the one I ultimately decided to use. It's sort of in between those last two. It's got a nice beveled edge and I put some foil tape around the edge to just bring out the quality of the gold lines that I used in my piece. So that's the one that I'm actually going to end up using. And you can see it's a 12 by 12 um, and it has a mat in it for a 5 by 7 and it's just got these little um, pegs on the back uh, these little clip type things that you just open up and it's real simple of course you you've seen these frames before it's got a glass piece um, and it's got the mat which I'll use for another project so we won't need any of those three pieces the only thing we'll need on this project is the backing and the uh, the frame itself here's the little close-up of that foil edge I just happen to have some from the Christmas section. There's a little bit of washi tape in these different Christmas pieces. These are nice to pick up and, and, and it's a nice accent I think to this piece overall. So I just pulled it out and put it on and then I will actually um, uh, varnish this at the ends to, to give that a little bit more um, stability on the washi tape. And then it's just a matter of popping your piece into the frame one thing you want to consider when you're painting, I don't always frame everything as I mentioned, so I'm not always as conscious, but making sure that your piece has enough of an edge on it uh, to fit into the frame nicely and that you're not cutting off any of your piece. So I come really close on this one. And then it's a matter of putting the backing in. And then pushing down those little prongs. I had to use a little something to help me get those prongs down really tightly. I'm not crushing the front. That's one thing you'd want to keep in mind if you had a mixed media piece, of course. And that's the finished piece. And I think it turned out really, really pretty with the frame. I do think the frame adds quite a bit to this particular piece. As I said, I don't frame everything. Um, but um, this, one, this one really needed a little something, I think, around the edge. And there's a little close-up. And here's some final shots of our mixed media poinsettia. I think it's beautiful. It turned out great. I love it. I hope you enjoyed this project. Here it is on a little table setting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this project. Thanks so much for joining me in my studio. Take care.